Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Well, as Odyssey's alpha, at least for PC players, gets closer and closer, the chatter from Frontier is starting to increase, basically on a bi-weekly basis, but there's always some sort of tidbit that we can find out in the community and on the forums, and in this case, from developer Gareth Hughes, who has come back with a question and answer session on NPCs, the interface, um, and what you can be able to do in regards to player combat. So let's take a look. But I'll be fair, it's not the most exciting of topics. They do answer the questions, mostly. However, you know, some things I think are probably a given, like any first-person shooter when engaging with NPCs and things like that. And it tends to focus on what's happening in regards to combat, as opposed to what could be happening when you're walking around stations, which is a little bit of a shame. So, like I say, let's take a good look. So, posted by Paul Crowther, the community manager of Frontier, on the 22nd of January, 2021. First off, when we see this post, we're greeted with what we've all been waiting for, really. A little bit of interpersonal chat room content within Elite Dangerous. We're in the boozer. We're in the bar. And you can see people sat at the bar, holding tablets at tables, milling around, having a pint, or some other type of libation. Now, despite one guy, or could even be a woman, with their hands on the hips, even if he's doing the My Little Teapot, you just don't know, and someone who could well be Michael Jackson, with the white gloves there, and some nice loafers, in some sort of conversation. You've got a drink thing in the background there, drink dispensers, and you've got a waitress and some flat screens. Just like what you get in McDonald's, so it just sees that the future is not that far away. Anyway, without dissecting the picture too much, let's get on to the meat of what's going on. So they say, 07 commanders, I salute you. So they wanna talk about the interface and changes to NPCs. Okay, so let's start off with the interface. It's the top section of this particular Q&A session. They say, will night vision or a light be available on the HUD? You will be able to upgrade suits in many ways. Night vision and lights are just two of the upgrades available. More on this in the future. All suits have a torch by default, though, so you'll always be able to see. Hmm. Okay, but night vision, it's on the ships as standard. If you've got your helmet on, you know, you would think, well, hmm, that might be fitted into the helmet. You just don't know, do you? Anyway, they're going to say be able to upgrade. They're very sort of like positive. Yes, all suits have lights. Night vision, from what we can determine from that, more than likely, it's going to be an upgrade. Okay, next question. Does the player's radar show players and NPCs before combat? If so, do they change to indicate relationship? Yes. Much like in space, the radar displays information regarding players around them and their current state. Okay, so fair enough. Um, let's move on down. Can we officially call the second icon on the display Tigger Mode? Hmm. Yes, and bounces away. So, okay. Um, will the HUD be customizable, i.e. different colors for the visually impaired? The interface will not be customizable for Elite Dangerous Odyssey. Well, that's a shame, isn't it? Now, as somebody who has customized their HUD colors on their screen in their ship by effectively manipulating some of the files um, on PC for this, and being very aware that, you know, people do have visual impairments as well, can't see certain colors. I myself, after having laser eye surgery, can't see the color blue that well. It's quite fuzzy. Anyway, it's a bit of an omission, I think, on the form of Frontier. They do so much work with um, fantastic charities like Special Effect, etc., and all the rest of it, to bring gaming to uh, disabled and disadvantaged communities what with um, different controllers and, and what have you, that not being able to change your head colors, that's a hell of an omission. I wouldn't say it's a game changer, but you know, I mean, come on guys, this is the 21st century, right? Anyway, can players turn off their HUD? No, the HUD whilst on foot will be essential to getting around as it's in space, as it is in space. 
okay. They continue with the last section on the interface, can we hide from other players' radar? They state, we are still in the process of reviewing how PvP and the HUD will work, so they can't confirm an answer on that just yet. Now some games, if you stay still, disappear off the HUD, or off their radar, don't you? As soon as you start moving or shooting, then you appear. Now, if you're staying still and hiding, it would stand to reason that perhaps your inability to move wouldn't trigger on someone's radar. Anyway, we'll leave that to them and see what they come up with. But to be fair, on the interface, some okay questions. I wouldn't say they're groundbreaking. Let's hope the Odyssey NPC questions will be a little bit better. So, Odyssey NPCs. Let's scroll down so we get that fully on the page. So, will we be able to use NPCs as a team in combat or just other players? So, what they're saying is, if you're Billy No Mates um, and haven't got any friends, and there are loads of people out there who play solo, solo uh, other, or their friends haven't got the game right, you know, can you get other players, corral other players, NPCs into your team? Okay, so combat zones will be a mix of both computer AI characters and players on both sides. So I'm kind of thinking they're going to say yes. Do on-foot NPCs spawn per instance, or is there some sort of permanence? If so, is it timed like space, POIs, or permanent? Hmm. I think they alluded to this in the last session. Anyway, settlement AIs is spawned based on the settlement theme and state. Okay, the star system factors will also affect the AI difficulty. So the BGS can also have effect. Okay. Not entirely sure what a BGS is. Background simulation. There you go. Does oxygen level impact combat ability and does this apply to NPCs as well? If your suit loses power, its life support will shut down, causing the suit's emergency air supply to be used. If the emergency air supply is fully depleted, then you will start to asphyxiate. Something to look forward to, isn't it? Making aiming and locomotion more difficult. Loss of suit power will also stop you from using your assisted jump and your audio will change, lowering awareness of what is happening around you. Okay, so talk about sensory deprivation there. This does not affect AI as they will use consumable batteries to recharge their suit when required. Okay, so say they run out of consumable batteries then. How does energy level impact combat ability? Is it just about your shield generator? And do NPCs have the same energy constraint too? Energy levels are critical to combat as this powers your shields. This supply is not infinite. So you know when to activate your shields will be key. Well, there you are then. So they're saying don't walk around with your shields on all the time, being a clever dicky, because your shield battery power will run out and then you will be vulnerable. Can NPCs get into NPC vehicles or ships for combat, or are those treated separately? On foot, NPCs do not get into vehicles. Well, that's a shame, though they can deploy from drop ships. Hmm. Okay, that is a shame. Do on foot NPCs chase you? Yes, if given reason to. Okay, fair enough. Next up. Is combat AI scripted for the new settlement, or is the AI clever enough to adapt itself to open terrain or other obstacles? Ooh, good question. AI will actively investigate areas, report findings, use cover, and communicate to call in reinforcements. Yes, but is it clever enough to adapt? Didn't quite answer the question, but okay, you know, it'll actively investigate areas, so you can assume and it is a big assumption, yes. Any information on the scope of line of sight for the AI? All AI line of sight will be governed by the same way the players. Okay, fair enough. Will NPCs engage in combat without player input? If you're wanted, NPCs may engage you without provocation. Okay. Um, will oxygen levels affect NPCs? Now, they kind of alluded that to the top as well, didn't they? AI will not be affected by oxygen levels the same way the player is, because they've got 
stuff to power their life support stated upstairs okay will npcs have different states depending on the time of combat i.e will they be asleep if a player attacks at night npcs will not have time of day states oh now that's a shame because attacking at night it should be like say you know a weaker guard shouldn't it but they're gonna be ready to fight like duracell batteries any time of the day Okay, will we see ground combat between NPC factions like we do in conflict zones? Yes, conflict zones will be a mix of AI and players. Will you consider adding superpower navy armors for ground combat? I.e. NPCs wearing imperial federal uniforms or armor, or such armor being available to players. It could prove to be a very potent world building tool. They are always looking at what customized options players would like to see in the game. So what they're saying is, no, didn't think of that. Um, next up, will there also be some kind of on-foot system authorities? Yes. Omnipol. They are often kitted out with the best gear. So if they turn up, make sure it's not for you. And that was the end of that. I really wasn't going to report on this. It's quite uninspiring, really, but it is news and it is development on the Elite Dangerous Odyssey game. Thanks very much for watching. If you're not so bored and you're still with me watching this video, like and subscribe, hit the notification icon and stay safe.